Financial assets include debt securities, equity securities, derivatives, and loans and notes receivable. Note that these are not the securities the company issues, rather they are securities of other entities that the company holds as an asset. In general, there are three methods to account for the values of such financial assets. Measured at cost or amortized cost, measured at fair value through other comprehensive income, and measured at fair value through profit and loss. For simplicity, we shall refer to the last two as FVOCI and FVPL, respectively. In general, securities that do not have a reliable market value should be valued at cost. Debt securities purchased with the intent to be held to maturity should be valued at amortized cost. Unrealized gains and losses should not be recorded for such securities. On the other end, securities that have reliable market values and are bought with the intent to profit over the near term should be valued at fair value through profit and loss. The unrealized gains and losses are reported on the income statement. And for securities that have reliable market values but are bought with neither the intent to be traded nor to be held to maturity, fair value through OCI will be appropriate. The unrealized gains and losses are reported as other comprehensive income. For both IFRS and US GAAP, loans and notes receivable are measured at cost. This is because these securities do not have reliable market values. Derivatives are mostly measured at FVPL. Most equity securities are also measured at FVPL. However, IFRS does allow companies to irrevocably choose FVOCI accounting at the point of acquisition. This designation cannot be changed later. Unquoted equity for which their fair value cannot be determined reliably should be measured at cost. Debt securities can be measured using any of the three methods depending on the intent. If the company intends to hold the debt security to maturity, it should be measured at amortized cost. If the company acquired the security with intent to collect interest but sell before maturity, it should be measured at FVOCI. And if the debt is acquired with the intent to trade for profit, it is measured at FVPL. US GAAP has specific terms for these three categories of debt investments – held to maturity, available for sale, and trading securities. To illustrate the accounting of these three categories and also the general accounting principles for the corresponding methods, we shall use this example of a three-year $100 par 4% semi-annual fixed coupon bond to highlight the differences between them. The bond was purchased at $100 par received a $2 coupon after six months, and the market price at reporting is $97.50. Held to maturity securities are recorded in the balance sheet at amortized cost. Amortized cost is equal to the original cost plus any amortized discount or minus any amortized premium minus any impairment losses. Subsequent changes in market value are ignored. Since the bond was bought at $100 par and there was no impairment, the bond is reported on the balance sheet at its amortized cost of $100. There is no amortization premium or discount as the bond was bought at par value. The market price at reporting for held to maturity securities are inconsequential. So even though the market value of the bond has dropped to $97.50, this unrealized loss is not reported in any statement. Trading securities are measured at fair value, also known as mark-to-market accounting. The unrealized gains and losses are recognized in the income statement. Since the market value of the bond has dropped to $97.50, the book value reported in the balance sheet is therefore $97.50 and the loss of $2.50 is reported in the income statement. Like trading securities, available for sale securities are reported on the balance sheet at fair value. However, any unrealized gains and losses are not recognized in the income statement, but are reported in other comprehensive income as a part of shareholders' equity. Since the market value of the bond has dropped to $97.50, the book value reported in the balance sheet 
is therefore $97.50, and the loss of $2.50 is reported under other comprehensive income as part of shareholders' equity. For all three classifications of securities, dividend and interest income and realized gains and losses are recognized in the income statement. Therefore, the $2 coupon that has already been collected is recognized as realized gain in the income statement. This basic framework of accounting using amortized cost, FEOCI and FEPL methods should suffice for now. There are more complicated calculations, but you won't need to worry about them until level two. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.